Every now and then, you might stumble across a bit of a hidden gem when exploring the more obscure recesses of a given streaming platform. And in my opinion, this anime I'm about to discuss is an example of just that. The anime is called Termai Romai Novai. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's based on a manga by Mari Yamazaki. Again, apologies if I pronounce that name incorrectly. The anime is about a bathhouse architect named Lucius Modestus and follows the journey of his career designing baths and spas. But wait, there's more. There's also a quirky, mysterious supernatural element to the story. Lucius has a habit of frequently falling into bodies of water, or being forced into them, or diving involuntarily, only to disappear from his place and time in Rome and emerge in an equivalent body of water in modern-day Japan. Since Lucius spends so much time around baths and spas for his work, and the personal pleasure of bathing, he tends to end up in a lot of baths and spas in modern Japan, and occasionally other bodies of water too, like a water park in one episode. Now, of course, to an ancient Roman, a futuristic land like the Japan of today would be quite a culture shock, and it is to Lucius. He marvels at Japan's modern innovations and spends his time there observing them, trying to glean as much information about them as he can in his short visit, as he only ever has a limited amount of time in Japan before he's magically transported back to ancient Rome at random. Although there's often a clear trigger for when he gets transported like this, such as falling asleep, getting knocked out, or being submerged in another body of water. The style and tone of the series is light-hearted and quirky, there are rarely any particularly high-stakes situations. The show is largely comprised of gentle comedy, and it's very quaint. So let's discuss some more specific details about the series, and what takes place, without divulging any major spoilers. The anime presents an in-depth look at how important bathing culture was to the Romans, and is now for the Japanese. Bathing, for these cultures, is presented as not merely a routine, functional act, but a communal, luxury experience, thought to be important for more than just cleanliness, but also general relaxation, recuperation after hard work, battle for the Romans, and other things like that. Whenever back in modern Japan, Lucius pontificates about this strange land he keeps arriving in, and how much more advanced than Rome it is. He marvels at the modern, foreign technology and mundane objects which to him are so alien. He samples Japanese food and drink, which he finds to be stunningly delicious, and so replicates these dishes and beverages to be served at the bathhouses he builds in Rome. He copies a lot of Japanese design choices for his new bathhouses, and designs crude replicas of some of their pieces of technology, using the primitive materials and techniques available to him in ancient Rome. A big struggle Lucius faces is that he's employed by the Emperor, Hadrian, who keeps enlisting him for assignments which bring him away from home, and cause strife between Lucius and his wife. There's even a remark at one point, delivered fairly casually given its rather extreme negative implications, that Lucius has not seen his wife for three years because he's been away from home working for the Emperor. This is a B-plot, and a relatively small amount of time is spent on it, but it is present throughout the run of the series, and plays a large part in building to the way in which the series ends. At the end of each episode, there's a small documentary section, where the manga author, Mari Yamazaki, visits a Japanese bath or spa, and is told about its history, use, and how it's maintained, etc., by one of the people working there. The place she visits sometimes connects to the storyline of the episode that's just been shown. Okay, so now a few caveats about the anime. As is sometimes the case with anime, the first episode is almost a bit superfluous. It's just padding for what's to come in the rest of the series. The story actually gets going properly in episode 2. Episode 1 has hints about what's to come, but it's really like a prologue for the main story and contains a certain amount of unnecessary stuff which doesn't really connect that integrally to what comes later. I think the content of that first episode probably could have been condensed into the first few minutes, or the first half of the episode, rather than the entire runtime of it, because it's slightly odd to start the story going properly in episode 2 of the series. 
However, it's a fairly minor criticism because the episode was still fairly enjoyable. And as I said, that's a more common way of doing things in anime than in Western television, where the first episode is ideally used to give the audience a clear understanding of what to expect from the rest of the series. Another caveat? There's some ugly rotoscoping where characters suddenly become uncannily three-dimensional and move more fluidly than they otherwise do. Fluidly, yet in a stiff, weird motion pathway, typical of 2D animation rotoscoping. It's out of keeping with the rest of the animation style for the show, and so stands out for the wrong reasons. But that seems to be mostly confined to the early episodes. There's less of it as the series goes on, which is good. The way Lucius's relationship with his wife is handled is a bit weird. To start with, she's only shown in flashbacks, and only makes an in-person appearance quite late in the series. She's mostly only ever shown to nag Lucius and give him a hard time about how much he works and neglects her. Almost no positive traits or any other character traits at all are shown for her, with the exception of about two scenes in total. But weirdly, even though no time had been put in to establish much of a connection between these two partners, I did still root for them. I suppose partly because I sympathised with her perspective. Her husband was away from her for three years working after all. I think it's also because she wasn't so much a character, but more a character model. The image of a character. The shape where a character should go. The series focused almost entirely on its main character, without expanding on others very much. So Lucius's wife was really more of a symbol of matrimony for him to grapple with maintaining. His interaction with his wife dramatised the struggle of being obsessed with work and not making time for other important things like marriage. Ultimately, using such an important character like this, like little more than a prop, is a flaw in the series. But the anime is so light-hearted and gentle that it's hard to really care that much. It didn't detract from my enjoyment, although the quality could have been enhanced by addressing this issue. To conclude, Termai Romai Novai is a nice, quaint, gentle anime to chill out with. It's funny and quirky, and based on a novel premise. Overall, it's highly enjoyable. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, but if the details described here sound appealing to you, I'd recommend giving it a try. So what do you think about this recommendation? Are you familiar with the series already? Do you like it? Does it sound appealing to you? Are there any other animes or hidden gems on Netflix you'd recommend? Let me know in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and click the bell end to receive alerts of when the next video is posted. Thanks for watching, see you next time.